Welcome to The Car Guys, and this week we're giving you our recommendations for the best cars you can buy for £25,000. Hopefully, you've already watched our best cars for £50,000, where I absolutely nailed it, so you will know what's in store this week. <laughs> Which is to say, 10 cars from each of us in the target budget, lively banter, and of course, highly questionable choices. <laughs> Not mine. We are not saying you should go out and buy the cars we're about to reveal, but we are saying this is how we would spend our hard-earned money. So if that sounds like your special kind of budget vodka, let's do this. I know, I know, £25,000 sounds like a lot of money. And yes, you can get some incredible cars, Though obviously, not a lot of new ones. No, but since, if you're a long-term car guys viewer, you probably have a healthy disdain for brand new cars, their nanny state features, pointless girth, relentless goal of being obedient tech drones, you most likely prefer the old metal like me. And if that's the case, my friends, you are in very safe hands. When it comes to our choices, we've set ourselves some rules and they are 10 cars each minimum. Proof. Find an actual car as it exists in the internet. Cars have to be fun, interesting, and ones we would actually want to spend our own money on. And you've got to have at least one practical car, and of course, no EVs. No EVs. Now, we should point out that these cars are the ones we would actually buy. We're not just talking about making a list for the sake of it. We have scoured the classifieds to bring you our deeply personal eclectic choices. Who knows, maybe some of the cars on these lists may be snapped up by you. But without further ado, let's get on with it. The best cars we think you can buy for 25 grand. Boom. Right. Right. 25 grand. I think you should go first this oh. time. Oh, okay. All right. Good. So I have honestly, I have nailed this. <laughs> you always say that. You always say, I got a bad feeling about this drive. <laughs> but I have, honestly. So I'm going to kick off. This is an absolute screamer. Here we go. Are you ready for this? 25 of thousand of your earth pounds on the budget. Yeah. Are you ready for this, viewers? What's that? Oh, <gasps> really? Yes. That, that is a Lotus... Esprit Series 3. Yes, it is. In gorgeous redness, 25 grand. Wow. To be honest, I never even went to the Lotus tab. <laughs> Didn't well, even go there. I know there are lots of trouble, usually serious, but 25 grand. How many miles is it then? Oh, I don't know. Let's, <laughs> let's just gloss over that. It's 58,000 <laughs> miles. Which, in any normal car, wouldn't be a concern at all. No. Let's be really honest about this. It is 25 grand, but you're probably going to have to spend another five on it over the course of the next three years. Because five? It's keep five. breaking down. But they're fairly simple machines. Bits are easy to come past, but it's a Lotus Esprit. All right, all right. Now show me the interior. I have a suspicion that it's going to be tartan. No, Ooh, it's not. Full cream. Full cream with wow. red carpet. Look that at those seats. Seat, yeah, it looks like a maxi pad, doesn't it? Look at it. <laughs> Look at it though. Mm. I mean, you can't argue with a Lotus Esprit, yeah. can you? And it's passed its MOT in September. So it's vaguely roadworthy. Good, good. Off I, to an absolute stonker of a start. I see your Lotus Esprit. <laughs> oh, oh. And I raise you. Go. Jaguar XJR. Oh, hello. Which, of course, is known as the fast one. This is the Q car. Very nice, simple. You would very never simple. know it's super fast, but in fact, it is. The real gentleman's express. You can yes. see this one happens to be a black car with cream leather as well. It's just under £20,000. So I'm well wow, within I'm budget. Well within budget here. Yeah. 4.2 litre V8. Nice. This is a 75,000 mile car. I always had a bit of a hankering for these. I know Jeremy Clarkson, he loved these Did he? in period, mm. by which I mean probably the early 2000s, probably 2003, um, 2004. Yeah. He was all over the Jaguar XJR. I recommended it. I did look at them. Mm -hmm. I excluded them because I thought you'd call me names. Oh, there you go. But uh, I'm pleasantly surprised. We are off to a, honestly, this one, we're off to a cracking start. We've got some mega ones in this mega list, ones. people. You need to stay tuned because you ain't seen nothing, nothing yet. yet. Triumph TR6. <sighs> Ooh. Now, mm. I realise that it's a fool's errand buying one of these cars because most of them, 
are rotten to buggery. They don't drive particularly well. Just look at the shape of them. They're macho, I'll give you that. They're proper manly cars. Manly car, macho, butch. I've never been a fan of the six. Oh, you like the more pure, do you? Well, I saw one in Cat Weasel once. <laughs> Cat Weasel! And, uh, oh, but I've never really been a big fan. There's a story behind the TR6. So when my father worked abroad, the guy that he used to work with had a red TR6. Okay. And he would let me sit and dry and steer the car on the campsite. Oh, okay. And that's the same with the Lotus from the previous choice. That The Lotus is uh, the first car I ever did 100 miles an hour in. Oh, and okay. I was probably about six or seven years old in the footwell because there was about six kids in it. Another long story, which one? Is this to. an Essex thing? No, we were actually in Belgium at the time. <laughs> but is this a Belgium so, thing? Yes, Belgium thing. I can see the nostalgia. Mm. So it's not for me, I have to say. It's not, not one I would ever, ever, ever consider spending money on. Sad times. Ever. Sad. Ever. Okay. My yeah. second choice. Go on then. Oh, you're going to love this. Go on. It is a BMW right. Z3M. So this is not the coupe. This is the soft top BMW Z3, which everyone knows it's the wrong is a one. very manly butch car <laughs> that you could never possibly say anything against. It's the wrong one. This is the one that's got the M3 engine in it. So you've got that beautiful petite shape, which I think has aged really well. You've got wider arches and then you've got the big old engine in there. So it's a 3.2 litre straight six. It's in blue, manual car nice. obviously, and actually I quite like it. I had the coupe version, which was the right version. What, the clown shoe? If I remember rightly, there's a little bit of twist. They don't, don't handle the power quite as well as you might. Don't they? Hope. Well, I would have one. Yeah, well, and I'll, I'll see you in the hedge. <laughs> <laughs> this better be a good one after the triumph. Look at this. Look at this. Oh, good Lord, baby Jesus. It's a Lancia Monte Carlo. It is that, isn't it? Yeah. Yes. Yes, right. Just look at it. How stunning is that? I mean, those rear buttresses, I mean, whoever came up with that design code was clearly bonkers. They say you could pick it up easily with a chain, <laughs> presumably. It's crazy. But wow, what a car. What a car. Yeah. Properly iconic car. It is £24,995. You can buy in Sussex. But yeah, it's gorgeous, isn't it? What do you think of that? I quite, square I do, I do like them. I like the Monte Carlo. I've never, ever, ever wanted to own one, but I do appreciate looking at other people's. So yeah. I think I could probably look at yours and that'll be fine. Yeah, the shape of it. It's just so cool. Maybe the interior is a bit. an aftermarket steering wheel. A bit. Yeah, I would guess that's probably off the market, yeah. <laughs> so I'm going to have to bring it back into oh, okay. more All modern, right. very desirable, right. beautiful engineered car. So what I've got is this. Oh. And as you can see, it is a Honda S2000. Now, I have always loved these. Really? Yep. Friend of the channel, JM on Cars, has got one. And I absolutely love it. Look really? Yeah. I'm not. A... You're wrong. You're wrong. A VTEC engine which screams. You've got that digital dash. Yeah. Look at the chiseled looks of this thing. It's yeah. such a pretty car. It is fantastic. And Isn't it a bit no frightening arguments. when it gets wet? Isn't it? No, it's more slightly... exciting. More exciting. Like, oh, exciting. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I, I'm not. I'm not unhappy with that. I mean, I wouldn't pay. I wouldn't pay actual money for it. I quite like it in yellow. Yeah. I quite like it in white because that's quite sort of like Honda oh, yeah, very Honda. type of yeah, art. Yeah. It's, it's aged quite well. Yeah. I mean, if you're in the market for a two seater open top sports, it's that oh, RDMX five really, isn't it? It's so good. Yeah. Exactly. Twenty three and a half grand gets you one of those. I think that's an absolute bargain. Okay. Slap me in the face and call me <laughs> Susan if it isn't so. How about that? Oh. A Lancia Fulvia 3 Coupe. One Look, of the prettiest cars ever made. Ever made. Yep. Look at the goldness of the wheels. Look yeah. at the simple body shape. Look at the no bumpers. That is Thanks. a seriously gorgeous car. Look at that simple interior. Beautiful thin steering wheel. Look at the wooden dash. Look. I do like them. That, I mean, that I'm not is sure a... I like that exact model. No, but uh, this is a representation of what you can purchase for that kind of money. And, you know, at, at um, 20 grand, 51,000 miles, 1974 car, so no no tax. I bet they, but it's got a lovely sort of parpy oh, exhaust. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you'll be doing oh. six miles an hour and it'll sound like you're doing a thousand. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's a proper bit of kit. You can it's... really understand your garage yeah, by during this. Looking yeah. at what I. Yeah. Yeah. I had to have a Porsche. Ofs. In the list. Ofs. Didn't want to go 911, didn't want to go too early. So actually, I've gone for a slightly questionable choice, but I've always wanted a 944 
Turbo SE. Seriously good looking car. I think this is the one to have if you can find them. The downside of the one that I could find within budget yeah. is it's done 121,000 miles. But that's right, it's an Audi engine, it'll last forever. But it's available from Phil Presswood Specialist Cars. Ooh. Oh, I like that. Available yeah. only 16 and a half grand. That is but bargains. it's the range topper, and I think it has the all-important pinstripe oh, seats. Oh, hello, Ladies nurse. and gentlemen, look at that. Yeah, yeah, these cars are normally up around 25, 26, 27,000 for, if you for can something, find one. if you can find one. If I could get a real mint Turbo SE, I would be quite yeah. happy, actually. Yeah, I, I, totally, I, I love that shape of that car, the, mm. uh, the bulging arches on it. So choice number, what's this, five for you, is it? Well, this is five, and... Yeah. and and unlike the rest of the people in the place, I've gone for a new car. So £21,500 will get you a Peugeot 208, basically. 1.2, pure tech. If you're in your young, early 20s, that's probably something you can afford to insure. That's true. Quite a nice little car if I was in the market. And I have teenagers. Can you hear that? What's that? That's all the, that's all the car guys view is Switching shouting. off. Yeah. <laughs> Switching <laughs> off. <laughs> but it's quite a sporty car. Everyone says it drives really, really well. So if you have, you know, if you want a new car and you haven't got the money, then I think that's quite a good well, choice. Okay, so I applaud you for going yes. new car. Yes. However, <clears throat> I see your, you know, 208 new car. Yeah. And I raise you oh, go on. 205 GTI old oh. car. Oh, because I needed to have one of these in my list, and I found a 45,000 mile 1.6 GTI, so the, the little oh, baby one. That's a shame. But 1.6 though. Well, it's, is it predictable to go for the 1.9 all the time? Everyone goes on about it. There's nothing wrong with it. It's a very sweet handling, still a sweet car, still quite Sweet, nippy. sweet car. Yeah, very nippy. That it? is absolutely mint. Absolutely mint. And I just think, look at that. Yeah, it may not be the slightly bigger brother, yeah. but I've heard people say that maybe the 1.6 ones are actually the better ones to have. Yeah, well, you would say that because you mm. haven't got a 1.9. Correct. Excellent. No, I like that. So that's not a bad choice. I would still have to have the 1.9 because I would get out every day. I'd open the door, I'd look at the badges in the back and I'd go, <laughs> yeah, I bought the wrong one. What about this bad boy? This is a Honda Civic Type R. 50 thousand miles, 25,000 pounds. This allegedly one of the sweetest, fastest point to point front wheel drive cars ever built. Bang up today. Do I? Do we like those truly though really? Would we have one of those? I think I'd have a Type R. Mm. I think I'd have a Type R. What we've got here is a Alpina B10 in Oxford. Green. Oh my days. I'm just in love with this thing. I mean, look at it. That, all that the has power. got that has got Damien written all over it. Yep. Yes, it does. I mean, I'm surprised that's not already parked up outside or on a trailer on the way here. Well, I'm a bit over green now. I'd quite like to move away. I've had, I've had too much green. Too much. Alpina known for really beautiful ride comfort with the right yeah. balance between smooth and speed. Those wheels are the absolute dog's dangly parts. 24,000 pounds. 24,000 gets you a B10 and I literally cannot believe it. 46,000 miles. That's barely anything. I know. It's got the full Napa lever. So I've never ever owned an Alpina. And now they've been subsumed by BMW mm. and sort of taken in house. It's, you know, it's sort of, I've got a bit of- Nostalgia for them. A feeling to get one, yeah, mm. it's quite nice. Yeah, I love that. Mm. I absolutely love that. There you go. That is a good, good choice. This one's fairly easy to understand, really. 997 yep. Carrera S. Oh, so that, isn't that the sweet, sweet handling The one? sweet, sweet handling. So rear wheel drive, mm. none of this four wheel drive nonsense that we don't like. It's in black, 23,000 pounds. And how many miles has it done? Because... So let's see your next choice. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, right. All right. So, yes. So, okay. Am I right, right in thinking that it's been to the moon and back? It's only got one hundred and five thousand miles. One hundred and five. Blimey. But that's not much, is it? I mean, you know, perfect little car. Very nice. That I is like, a perfect little car. I like the lettering as well. It makes it look like a Carrera T. Yeah. Nice. Black interior. Yep. Black on black. Yep. Manual. Spot the on. Well, the, the ability to have a 911 on the drive, I mean, come on, you know... I would absolutely you buy would. that car tomorrow. Yeah, you would. That, that is a sweet car. It's time to call car friend Tom. We're going to call car friend Tom, who is a Porsche specialist. Tom, if I was looking to pay £23,000 for a 997 Carrera 2S, uh, what do you reckon? What, dot, dot one? 
Uh, yeah. Yeah. Not one at twenty three thousand. Yeah. Well, you could have the engine problems. Yeah. <laughs> and what if it's done one hundred and five thousand miles? It's probably got ball scoring. Is that a bad thing? Is that bad? That's a bad thing, yeah. Right. Oh, okay. okay good. All right. Just wanted thanks. to check. Thanks. thanks. All right. It's a rebuild. All right. Thanks. Thanks, thanks, thanks then. Thanks, bye then. Tom. Bye. 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 Love you. Bye. bye. So anyway, absolute bargain. Mm, absolute. Solid recommendation there. <laughs> Brilliant. This is not a choice that you would be expecting me to come up with. Right. Oh. Which, I, which makes me want it even more. Yeah, of course. Are you ready? Yeah. Mercedes-Benz. Yeah. 560. What? Now, Any, look. What? Look, look at it. Look. Yeah, five <coughs> looks point... like a car my granddad used to own. <laughs> 5.5 litre engine. What would you call that? 70s colour? Yeah, really 70s. 70s colour, but yeah, it's a 1990 car. Does it come with the body in the back or just yep. the spade and the, yep. comes and the with, lime? Comes with three bodies in the back, comes with a submachine gun. Nautic blue it is, Nautic blue. Nautic. With a factory period two-tone paint scheme. I love the way that the entirety of the interior is blue, blue. except the steering wheel, which is in black. Yeah. Because that, that doesn't make a horrible contrast that, at all. That wasn't an option back then. No, clearly. Yeah. Now, I love old smokers. Yes, you do. And I love these sort of Jesus. long wheelbase, smoky mercs. I absolutely adore this that... shape. Now it's done 132,000 miles. And you're having a go at my Porsche? And it, it, but it's only 13 grand and I just, I mean, it shouldn't be in the list. It really shouldn't be in the list, so please, please don't buy it. Uh, well, you know, it is definitely you. I make no apologies, but then at the same time, I make lots of apologies. Yeah, okay. All right, no worse for you. You know, you like that old crap, so. Mitsubishi Evo 8. Evo 8, okay. FQ. FQ what? Just FQ. No, it has to be a number. It has to be oh, FQ 300, FQ 340. So FQ this is something. an FQ 300. Okay, so that's the one that isn't so highly strung that you need to service it every 2,000 miles. It or, will not explode instantly. It's it, the comfort model. Quite exactly, quite powerful, but not stupidly powerful. Exactly. And it means it probably lasts as well. And it's done 95,000 miles, which Maybe is, not. Which is barely running for a Mitsubishi. It's a Japanese car. You're just saying that the f sodding great big turbo on there is gonna stress the internals of that engine a bit more than normal. Is well, that what you're suggesting? As strong as the 300 is, I still think that plus high mileage, mm, red light, warning, warning, Will oh. Robinson. Sort of looks like it spent quite a lot of time in the St. Paul's area of Bristol. <laughs> It's interesting, but I have got you, my friend. This is actually going to be quite quite up your street because you sort of love these things. Oh, yeah. This is a Volvo V60. Nice. Three litre Polestar. Wow. And I've also got it in this quite insane yeah. rebel blue. I think you could only get them in that blue, couldn't you? Really? I don't know. Don't know that much about the Polestar. I thought you could get black as well, but this is again, yeah, this is quite good. a cue car, this. Yeah. No one knows about them. No. Very hidden. You'd think, oh look, it's just a Volvo. It's probably got like a two litre diesel in it. And then off you go. A little insane, bit of Polestar badges. Insane performance. I think that's a proper rocket, that one. Oh uh, yeah, it is. Yeah, proper rocket. Yeah, and very rare as well, which is nice. So yes. he ticks those boxes. 24,750 quid from oh, White Thor Cars. I like it. Inside, combination of leather and uh, Alcantara type material or suede. And obviously, away from the lights, a lot quicker than you'd expect. I like it. Oh, that's good. Boom. Wow. I mean, you, you The defense that. rests. Let's see what we've got next on the list. Oh yeah, this is an absolute, this <laughs> oh, is an yeah. absolute classic. V8 Muscle. Monaro, Holden, what is it? Well, it was a Monaro, but then <gasps> the clever people at Vauxhall went, no, we're gonna call it the VXR8. Ooh. So this is an official UK car. It's just under 19,000 pounds, wow. 2007. It's only done 50,000 miles. Six litre petrol engine, proper bit of kit. Oh. Rear wheel drive. I think I'm in love. Massive horsepower. I that... think I'm in love. This is basically a modern day Lotus Carlton. Yes, it is. Look at it. Even looks a bit like a Lotus Carlton. Talk about Q cars. There's I another. Mean, look out, at that. Why wouldn't you love that? That's phenomenal. But look at it. Oh, oh black on black. This, on is, black. this is like the perfect Mad Max car. Isn't it? How much is it? Barely anything. 19 grand. Will they take a debit card? I would have thought so. Do you want to phone them now? And that is phenomenal. I love that. I Centurion love everything about it. automotive. Proper Q car. Yeah. Six litres. Yes. Yes. V8 muscle car. I think the car guys need to purchase this vehicle this and turn amazing. it into some kind of company car. <laughs> 
You'd love that, don't you? I thought you'd like that. I thought you'd like that. Manual V8. That's fabulous. We're done. Thanks for watching. No, sorry. <laughs> right, come on in. Wow. So my penultimate choice is a Mercedes SL 500. Nice. With the panoramic roof. Oh. It's done 60,000 miles. It's an obsidian blue. And it's Ooh, one of those like cars of that blue. literally will last forever. It's the classic shape. It's the classic Grand Tourer in that color scheme. Boom. Yeah. I, I, I could not be more on board. I had to have it. Like, looking at that, I was like, yes, it's got to be on the list. This, although I think I'm still five or six years too young to have it. Really? Do you reckon? Yeah, I, but that is the type of car that I'd like to do a cross-European yes, road trip exactly. in. exactly. It's bald and tastic. I mean, you just get in there, you drop the roof down, cruising around the south of France. No one's going to blink an eye. They're always going to think that you're slightly more clever and well-off than you actually <laughs> are. But yeah, that would be absolutely spot on. Big yep. Big boot in it as well. Yep. All that power, waftiness. What a great choice. Yeah. Let's have your last choice. Come on then. then. Oh, hello. <laughs> hello, ladies and gentlemen. We have a rocket ship here. I've gone, Woo. I've gone the last couple. I thought I needed to blow it out the park. I've gone maximum horsepower. Wow. So this is a TVR Cerbera. Yes, it is. And is it pink? It, it's well. I'm, I'm guessing it's royal rose, ro rose red, ready colour. Well, I was getting redder the more the more the sunlight comes in. Yeah. So this is a four and a half litre yep. manual coupe. That four and a half litre engine. This thing will blow your bloody face off. Oh, oh look! Look at that interior. Good. Good. Look Lord. at that. Strawberries and cream. Strawberries and cream. I mean, well known the Cerbera for doing at least a thousand miles an hour, hanging on for dear life. I love the Cerbera. I, I honestly couldn't say what the ownership proposition must be like now. Oh, f absolutely frightening. It is a two plus two. Very space age. It's, yes. They always seem to be in, incredibly long because it always looks like they'd be very stable at high speed, which is a good idea because obviously it, it does do at high, high speed. speed. 1997 TVR Cerbera, owned for the past 14 years, always in dried storage. New starter motor, battery fitted, oil service, only selling to make space. Only done 6,000 miles in the past 13 years. Couple of TVR niggles. He's written that twice. Hmm. Which means that he obviously couldn't get into it for three years because the battery was flat. <laughs> <laughs> he's actually Probably. writing this description from inside the TVR going, I can't get out. And I remember Clarkson doing one of those sort of videos, you know, Clarkson Unleashed, Unleashed, Clarkson on Cars. And they would always do drag races and that always beat everything. It's just ridiculous mm. as a thing. Good choice, very yeah, good choice. Go. Now, my last one okay. is a car that I've owned in the past. Oh. And I've- Is that fair? Always loved. Yeah. And you can get it for less than 25,000 quid. Okay. And it is- Doesn't begin with a Ferrari then, does it? No. It begins with a Trident. Oh. It begins, it is the Maserati Grand Sport. Nice. This is a very, very pretty coupe. Is this the boomerang light, tail light version or the no, other one? No, hamburger light. Oh, okay. So this is the later car. It's in an incredible color, Mediterraneo blue. Yeah, they just made that up. 4.2 liter V8. Nice. And having been an owner of these cars, honestly, they, there is only one thing wrong with a Grand Sport and it's the paddle shift gearbox. Because yeah. it's one of those early single plate clutches, which means when, if you're booting it hard and the engine sounds incredible and it is fast, but when you change up with the fairly flimsy feeling paddle, yeah, yeah, it yeah, feels yeah. like you're ripping away about 10% of the clutch each change. You're always fearful that you're gonna come up with a big clutch bill at some point, but you are getting blue dials, a beautiful hand-stitched Italian interior. The exterior is incredible. You've got that sort of bird cagey, lovely grill on the front. You've got these beautiful anthracite wheels, mm. which cost a fortune, I know. I had to replace some after I curbed them. Phenomenal car and less than 25 grand. And then obviously 25 grand a year in maintenance. Yeah, at mm. least. A, a barest minimum. And there you go. That's it. That's it. That is another episode. That is the uh, best cars you can get for 25 grand or less. And I think you'll agree, some incredible choices in there. I am exhausted. <laughs> and I'm spent. Don't forget to subscribe. Ding the notification bell when we've got another film uploaded. Find us on Instagram and don't forget to buy that merch.
There'll be another episode next week.